Can I ask you to think back to your first art project? Take a moment to travel back in time and recall when and where your creative journey started. No matter who you are or what your passions are, or whether it's drawing with chalk in a driveway or heavy engineering, everything involves some type of creativity. For me, it was years ago in Montreal, Canada, where I would sit at a countertop and scribble away with my markers whilst watching my parents cook. Drawing by myself and with them, I became obsessed. As I got older, I experimented with other styles of art, such as painting, sketching, and more drawing. And with more painting, sketching, and drawing practice, I advanced my skills. When I first moved to Bali in 2014, I joined into fourth grade, where I met a young English chap with the name of JJ. <laughs> he and I shared a passion for drawing him more on the technical side, like drawing planes and buildings with perspective, and me drawing abstract and nature. While looking at his work, I grew fond of the style. And that's when I started to explore the world of design. It started with him and I designing our dream houses as we could imagine our fantasies and envision them on a bigger scale becoming a reality. That is when I fell in love with architecture. I would spend countless hours drawing houses such as this one, designed in 2015 by 10-year-old me. And although it consists of some curves, you can notice that it mainly is only made of squares. But that's beside the point. With more exploration, I followed to discover SketchUp, a 3D modeling software where I could take the initial house design I had on paper and attempt to transform it into a cohesive 3D design. The world of architecture just became more and more interesting. Being at Green School in my everyday life, I noticed that the buildings are beautiful. But inside the classrooms, how much of the furniture is actually functional, apart from you know, making holes in your clothes? You know those bamboo chairs with the metal nails sticking out of them, and every time you go and sit down, you're hoping not to rip a hole in your clothes? And, all right, we all get it. The <laughs> point is, they're not that functional. I noticed the same issue in my household, a lack of functionality, storage, and convenience. The initial furniture just didn't live up to our household needs. And that's when I decided to make a change. My first furniture design project was initiated in 2020 when my dad offered to let me design a storage compartment for his work supplies. And of course I said yes. But here is where you might start to notice repetition. Squares. My designs so far have mainly only included squares and boxes. Over the next few years, I embarked on several other furniture design projects, such as this super beautiful rainproof outdoor unit to house a 3D printer that smelt of toxic resin. Square again. And you guessed it, a square terrarium to house my brother's reptiles. Finally, I designed a desk of my own. Throughout the process of all of these furniture projects, I sat with a local carpenter and explained my design plans, working through the Indonesian language barrier to get each piece made perfectly. And I was more than happy. However, it's only quite recently that I was sitting with one of my mentors, Pac George, where he asked me to break down and reflect on all the design projects I've worked on over the years. And that is when I realized it. Every single one of them was made up of squares. It was almost like I was stuck in a loop of square designs. I was trapped in a box. Now, don't get me wrong, when I look at my furniture, I feel accomplished because I know that I was the one who turned imagination into reality. And that is the beauty of design. Moving forward through my years and doing several more design projects, I finally approached the last year of my green school journey. Due to my countless hours of passion and design, I knew I wanted to make something impactful related to this. Maybe I could create a new high school hangout space. Nope, we already have that. Or what about a new high school study area? No, we have that as well. Digging up ideas and exploring aspects of design, I ended up organizing a meeting with another one of my mentors, Ibu Kate, where I asked if Green School had any project opportunities related to architecture that I could potentially be a part of. 
immediately Ibu Kate mentioned that I could be involved in working with Green School and an organization known as the World Parrot Trust. The World Parrot Trust is a global conservation organization committed to protecting parrots and their habitats. In Indonesia, they have implemented various initiatives to protect these beautiful birds, such as habitat protection, conservation breeding, and community engagement. They are motivated to ensure the future of all these birds through habitat conservation, anti-poaching efforts, and responsible ecotourism. The project proposed to me was to create a new aviary to be situated at Green School that would house an endangered species of birds known as the Mitchell's lorikeet. Eventually, after a time of captivation, these birds would be able to repopulate and get their species thriving again. I mean, check out this cool dude. How could I refuse that offer, right? <laughs> with more back and forth, we came to the decision that I would be working with the team as the architect for the aviary. I got into contact with the World Parrot Trust, and we sat and discussed what my responsibilities would be as a member of this project. Upon discussion, there were many things I had to take into account, such as design aspects that would affect the bird's well-being. This includes the fact that if there are any sharp corners included, the birds will feel trapped, or that they need about half of their space fully covered in shade in order to protect them from the full-blown sun shining down all day and spreading an unnecessary amount of heat. The list goes on. After acquiring the necessary information, I met up with another one of my mentors, Pak Kadek, where, I, where we measured out the open land. It was now up to me to start designing. Starting with a pen and paper, I sketched out different ideas and shapes, such as these. You notice any similarities? <laughs> yep, more squares. As I reflected and questioned my work, I realized that this was definitely not going to work. I hadn't embodied the factors that I had been assigned, and if I wanted to make something impactful, it would definitely not be a rectangle bird aviary modified with a couple curves. Something needed to change. And suddenly, I was struck with a memory. You see, a long time ago, before even starting this project, I was having a conversation with an individual about design and architecture. One of the main points they mentioned was biophilic architecture, and what makes a design cohesive while being beautiful. This could maybe be the gateway through my square design barrier. The concept of biophilic design dates back to the early 1980s when biologist Edward O. Wilson proposed the concept of biophilia, suggesting that humans possess an inherent biological attraction to nature. From there on, scientific research has proven this concept right. In 2001, here, Wagen and Hayes were the first to define various features in biophilic architecture. Did you know that there are approximately 100 billion buildings in the world to this day? And as cities continue to grow and expand, there is a greater need to incorporate elements of nature into our surroundings to combat the negative effects of urbanization. While urbanization offers many advantages, it often lacks the restorative benefits of nature that are essential to human well-being. Biophilic design is an approach to all kinds of design that incorporate elements of nature into our built environment to create spaces that are more conducive to human well-being. Studies have shown that biophilic design can have a number of positive effects on human well-being, including exposure to nature can help reduce stress and anxiety, lower blood pressure, and improve overall mood. Incorporating natural elements into work environments can help with productivity and creativity. And overall, exposure to nature can help with cognitive function, attention span, and memory. Scientific research states that curves in organics actually affect any living being's mental state. Biophilic design has been shown to be more cal calming, comforting, and conducive to health and happiness. Take a look around you. Look at the beautiful structure above your head. You may or may not realize it, but the curvature and organic design is actually playing a positive role to your mental well-being. Take a moment to admire the beauty and see how it makes you feel. After research and reflection on biophilic design and what the concept entails, I decided to restart from scratch. I scanned the internet for beautiful bird aviaries, most of which were small basic square cages, but here and there, 
I was able to find designs that embodied the biophilic concept. With newfound inspiration, I set out to design the new functional aviary. Starting with a pen and paper, I scribbled out different unique curved shapes such as this, resembling three flower petals. I was thrilled with this idea. With more sketching, I was able to take my 3D design skills and turn my 2D concept into a cohesive 3D design. With a total of zero straight-lined corners, I had finally broken through my square design period. With newfound excitement, I set out to finish the design. I eventually sat with Pat Karek, where I asked for his thoughts and ideas on the aviary. I needed his professional help to tie the whole design together. We sat and spoke about a bunch of techni technical things, and he shared his thoughts and ideas. We spent time editing and refining the structure, and before long, he and I had created this collaborative piece of art. In the end, we created a design that is empathetic towards wildlife and symbolizes the beauty of Green School. The bird aviary represents a valuable contribution towards the regeneration of wildlife. My collaboration with a highly esteemed organization has resulted in a beautiful partnership. I've had the privilege of working closely with the World Parrot Trust and their approval of the design brings us closer to its finalization with preparation for the construction process well underway. Looking ahead, this initiative holds great potential in offering enriching learning experiences to future students. Thanks to this opportunity, I was able to elevate my knowledge and love for design. This project has taught me to create a space to maintain the ecosystem that allows its inhabitants to thrive. The structure will be wrapped in a mesh and a double door will be situated at the entrance. So, when we think about how structures impact humans, why aren't we considering that for wildlife as well? Thank you. <laughs>